Hello, welcome to Caldwell County Today. I'm Paige Counts, Public Information Officer for Caldwell County. Today, I'm at Hub Station in downtown Hudson and I have the Hub Steering Committee with me. And right now we're gonna to talk to Rebecca Bentley, who's also Hudson Town Manager, about the history of this building. Rebecca, tell me a little bit about the history. Okay, this building was originally on this site was a school building that burned to the ground and they rebuilt it and it burned to the ground again. So they built this building in the 40s and they built this building with firewalls. It's the first school building in Caldwell County that had firewalls, which means we have 18 inch thick masonry walls in this building. So when the school decided to move the school and build a new elementary school, this, this was the school, of course, for all the grades in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then it became for uh, elementary and middle school. And then it just became elementary school. And at that point, they decided it wasn't big enough. They needed a new building. And this building was going to be abandoned. And so the town had to make a decision. Did they want this building or what was going to happen? And we didn't really want the building but we didn't want a big pink elephant in the middle of, of Hudson so we took it thinking that we would just um, maybe paint the walls and replace the carpet and see if we could rent it out well that didn't work out so well but the very first year we had it we we had had the building inspected and uh, we felt like it was structurally sound it looked terrible but it was structurally sound and we found out very soon afterwards that the auditorium was termite ridden so I had a commissioner one time that said after we evicted like a, a billion termites <laughs> uh, we had to do something and that's when Mayor Winkler and Ann Smith and I were on uh, a trip to Washington they were uh, Mayor Winkler was a commissioner then mm -hmm. and we were trying to think what can we do with this old building we just didn't know what to do with it and we decided Ann actually came up Ann Smith with the idea that there was no dinner theater anywhere around here there were theaters lots of community theater but no dinner theater and so we decided we would attempt dinner theater I will tell you I was the first one that said what nobody's coming Coming to dinner theater that, that's not going to happen in Hudson but we attempted that the first one was a lot of work for a lot of people because we tried to handle it all ourselves and 27 dinner theaters later we're pretty well regionally known for our dinner theaters Keith Smith is our director he does an amazing job we have wonderful actors and wonderful set builders and wonderful costumers and great volunteers and uh, we have performed well, what the uh, Sound of Music performed to over 2,000 patrons. So that's half the size of our population. So we, you know, you can't say anything bad about our dinner theater. It brings people in from as far away as neighboring states. And we know that because we now um, have that all on computer. At one time, <laughs> we just sold them. We walked up to you and sold you a ticket. But now it's all on computer. So now we have data and we know that we are selling tickets from miles and miles away. So it's certainly a draw for Caldwell County. And up until the COVID, we were renting the auditorium about 90 times a year. So that means almost every weekend it was rented. Um, but COVID, of course, has changed all that. But because of COVID, a couple years ago, we decided that we were gonna rebrand this building. Uh, that was a, a, a project that was driven by Ann Smith and Kathy Carroll and, so, and the rest of the steering committee. And it was rebranded to the Hub Station Arts and Business Center to try to come up with a unique combination of providing a building that had both arts and a business center and people could make money with their arts hopefully. And we could bring people into Hudson to do that. Uh, so that was the idea and then COVID hit. Well, after COVID hit, that gave us an opportunity to do some of the renovations that you see here free of people being uh, mm -hmm. in the building. Uh, the first thing we needed was an elevator because 
these are old buildings and they did not have elevators. So the elevator, um, that's a big expense and we weren't sure that was gonna be able to happen, but the steering committee was able to raise enough money to install the elevator and you'll see it on your tour of this building today. And um, it is, needs to be inspected, but beyond that it's ready to go. And so I hope you will see that um, we've gotten lots of uh, cooperation with lots of people who love this building. And one of those, of course, is Jan Karen. We met Miss Karen uh, at our centennial in 2005, and she uh, has become a great friend to, um, to the town of Hudson. And she went to school here. She's a world-renowned author, as most mm -hmm. everyone knows. And so um, she went to school here. I went to school here. Lots of people who live in Hudson went to school here and have fond memories mm -hmm. of it. We've had teachers who've walked into this building who just burst into tears to see that the building just has been renovated and saved. And so that's, um, that's pretty much the history of it. It's been here for a very long time. It's serviced uh, the community since the beginning and we hope it will until the very end, which is many, many years out in the, <laughs> in the future, we hope. And we're gonna take a look at the building. You've done a lot of renovations. How have those renovations been paid for? For the most part, the renovations have been paid for, th for uh, through fundraising, almost, almost exclusively through fundraising. And they have worked their fingers and feet mm -hmm. and telephones mm -hmm. to the bone trying to raise that money. And as you'll see, that different people have sponsored rooms here. That um, that's a, a way that we got some influx of money. We had some businesses that gave us some rather large donations. So mostly it's been done with renovations almost exclusively. Before I forget, if somebody wants to make a donation to Hub Station, how do they do that? All they got to do is call Janice uh, Woody, the mm -hmm. Hub Manager, and she will get them in touch with the people who need to talk to them, and we will take that money. I assure <laughs> you, we will take that money, and we will put it to good use, because it's all gone back into this building, every single dollar of it. Okay, thank you. You're we welcome. may talk to you some more okay. as we go through the building. All right, thanks. Part of the entire purpose of this facility page is to honor the past and create a real vision for the future. You know, there are old school buildings in every community, everywhere. And we hear stories often from people who were heartbroken because their old school building has been torn down or is in great disrepair. And I give it to the town of Hudson and Rebecca's leadership. Rebecca's been town manager for over 30 years here. So I give them the credit for recognizing they need to preserve the history. And in preserving history, we're looking to the future. But to show how much history matters to us, we contacted a good many people in the area who might want to invest in helping us get the funding we needed to upscale, renovate, and make this place look new again. And a good example of that is right behind us, or in front of us there, the Kirby family. That's George and Eleanor Kirby and their children, Kyle, Kevin, and Craig, all of whom I taught <laughs> years ago. Uh, George and Eleanor are both graduates of what was then Hudson School in the 50s and it was grades one through 12. They are both graduates of that, and you will see those signs, those are called naming rights signs. They don't own the room, but they put their name there because they love this, this facility. And they love what we're doing to preserve this facility. And so they gave us then enough money that we could go into that space and renovate it, update it. And you'll see all along our hallways here in the art center and when you get to the business center, you'll see naming plates where people have said, I love that school. I loved what it meant to this community. They're making it mean a lot again to this community in a new way. They're repurposing it. I think I'll invest in it. And that tells you how much Hudson community loves their schools
<laughs> and the buildings they went to school in and what they represent to them in terms of unity and community. This part of the building here is what we call the East Wing and in the East Wing we have added what we uh, are calling our retail side of the building. The first room that you come to, and I hate she's not here today, mm -hmm. uh, that you would come to when you would first come into the East Wing is uh, Angie Warren's little dress shop, furniture shop. Uh, you just got to go in there to see it. I really hate that she didn't make it today so that everybody could see that. Um, but it is Junk Gypsy Angel's Boutique and it is definitely a little shop that you need to go into. The next one we come to um, is Kim Picton and she does her massage and oils. Next retail shop um, is our Healthy and Creative uh, and you'll be talking with them. Mm -hmm. Uh, they will tell you all about what they do in there and then when the Jan Karen Museum gets opened up we will have uh, Happy Endings Bookstore which will be a retail shop and that's coming this fall. Uh, so those are, uh, we also have uh, the Red Awning Gallery which is a nonprofit organization but they still share uh, or sell uh, all of their paintings. We have a gallery all the way down the hall that if you ever need a special gift of any kind, I mean, you've got to think about these artists who make everything. Pottery, wood, jewelry, paintings, you name it, cards, books are all in the Red Awning Gallery. You've just got to stop by there and see it. So we have really a variety of things here in the hub station, which we're hoping that that news gets out into the public. And I think as we open back up, mm -hmm. um, the COVID goes away, hopefully, when everybody gets vaccinated, um, people will be ready to get back out. Uh, so that's the retail end of the building. We'll talk a little bit about the auditorium when we get there. So uh, we do have a variety that people could come in and shop uh, for a gift or just come in and see Miss Kim over here. Mm -hmm. That's going to make your day. <laughs> uh, so I think Kim's going to speak to you about her little place And I have here. one more question sure. before I let you go. Do you have all of your retail space rented right now? We do. We are completely full on retail. That's we are getting at, we're getting very close to being full period upstairs and down even in B building. It is unbelievable and so exciting. How long have you been working on that goal? Um, about a year. Okay. And we are almost there. We're, it's been a lot of hard work. It's been a great team. It's been a team effort. I have a great team and uh, I couldn't have done it without them. Now we're with Charmaine who rents space here at the Hub Station. Charmaine, tell us about your business here. Okay, well, this is Healthy and Creative and we do uh, lease out space here at the hub station and we are a local business and we are family run and operated. Now Healthy and Creative is a dual store. We carry Lego product and we also carry Juice Plus products which includes our indoor aeroponic tower gardens. And so it is somewhat unique but there is definitely a market for creativity with our Legos and food grown at home especially during this time. Tell me about your I'm not sure, I'll say this right, your hydro... It's okay, so it's an aeroponic gardening aeroponic. system and it is cousin to hydroponics and the roots actually hang free air and so they're not sitting in the water. That's the difference between the aeroponics and the hydroponics. The wonderful thing about this is that you can put it right in your kitchen. This is my favorite kitchen appliance. I have one in my kitchen it feeds us all the greens my family eats all throughout the week. We eat green every day. It is so easy. So it's air, water, and light. There is no dirt involved, no bending, no out in the heat, no bugs or mosquitoes. It is my kind of gardening. Mm -hmm. And so we are offering this. This is my showroom, of course. Mm -hmm. But the wonderful thing about this is that it can be placed in your kitchen. And if you want to put it outside on a patio, you can roll it out on the patio too. So it's pretty awesome. Tell us what you're, you have growing. Okay, so as you see right now, uh, that tower over there and that tower right now, we are doing replanting. Mm -hmm. We rotate our crops because we're constantly picking off. Mm -hmm. But the one here in the, in the middle 
has green Merlot lettuce. And we decided just to grow the Merlot lettuce here on this tower because it's one of our favorites. And that's just our, our, our opinion. This one over here on the very top, we have Chinese cabbage and green star lettuces coming up. And then on the back side, I have some chives and some herbs and stuff like that. So we are planning on growing some more stuff and it's all for vining vegetables, greens and lettuces. And you don't want to do root vegetables in them because <laughs> you really need dirt for root vegetables. But other than that, you can also do like strawberries. You can do any, anything that vines, um, eggplant, zucchini, squash. And we're hoping with the one with the cage, once we harvest this, we're going to be putting in eggplant and zucchini and squash. Why is Hub Station a good fit for you and your business? Because we love our community. This is our home. We live right here in Hudson. And what can I say? I like to keep business and our friendships right here in the community. And our people here are of great support to us. And it's a hometown ordeal. Okay, thank you uh -huh. so thank much. You. Now we're in the art gallery. And Beverly, you run the art gallery. Tell us a little bit about the gallery. It's owned by the Western North Carolina Society of Artisans. And there's seven of us current displaying members. And we're, we're looking for other people that want to be entrepreneurs, that look, want to learn the business of art. That's one of our, our missions, is to help artisans become entrepreneurs. So we're, um, we're excited about it. It's a new, brand new. We haven't been in existence but a um, couple years now. But now we just last summer got the 501c3 status, so we're excited about that. If someone wants to, is an artist, they want to learn how to become an entrepreneur, how can they reach you? They can come to the gallery. We've got a, uh, we're on Facebook, and um, we do have a, a Google website, so they can reach us through that, and we have an email address, and it's really simple. It's wncsoa at gmail.com, so. Okay, why is it important that you're at the hub, at hub Station? Oh, being at the Hub Station, being part of this brand new art center. We're so excited because right now it starts out slow, but we know it's going to be a tourist attraction. We know it's going to, our, our, everybody that's in here, we're going to be seen by people from all over the world and all over the country. Okay, thank you. Right. And we, we have kept everything we could keep that was, was, uh, capable of being repurposed, renovated, fixed. We have kept all those things because we love the history and the architecture of the building. And it reminds you you're in a school. It was a school and it kind of takes you back, no matter where you're from, mm -hmm. to your years uh, in school. But Jan specifically, for instance, wanted the what looks like chicken wire in which strengthens the glass she said don't remove that don't remove that i want that because it's about the history of the building and buildings like this everywhere mm -hmm. um, she painted the doors red because uh, it is common for church doors to be red and the main character in her Mitford novels was Father Tim. Mm -hmm. And so she felt that would be the marker for her specific classrooms for Mitford. And right behind us here, where we see Marlene Hartley's name, who is another graduate of Hudson High, who wanted to contribute to what we're doing. This room behind him, what was Classroom 2, will be Happy Endings Bookstore. And if you're a fan of Jan Karen, you know exactly who had it, what was in it, <laughs> and how often people went to Happy Endings Bookstore. And it will be the gift shop for the two actual museum historical rooms behind us. When do you anticipate the museum opening? We have reset that date three times. <laughs> Right now, we are, are thinking that it will occur in uh, uh, fall, and we're hoping it will occur in early October. That is our goal. 
and we think within another month we can solidify that date. Why are you using studio space here at Hub Station? Well, I had become overcrowded at home, and uh, so I needed more space. And as you can see, just in a year, this is already pretty cluttered. Mm -hmm. uh, and it gets me closer to the gallery, which is downstairs, which I'm a member of. Mm -hmm. And uh, gives me an opportunity to uh, be somewhere where people want to come in and see artists at work, we're here. We enjoy that. We're, people are always welcome. We don't mind the public coming in. It's taken me a while to get used to letting people see me work. I've mm -hmm. always liked to not let anybody <laughs> see it till it's finished. Mm -hmm. But I've gotten over that. <laughs> and uh, I'm even considering teaching some art lessons. I am a retired school teacher, so teaching shouldn't be too difficult for me mm -hmm. but uh, what did you teach when you taught school oh I taught mostly language arts social studies uh, sixth grade mostly okay and, uh, but prior to being a teacher I'd been in journalism for 14 and a half years and in every opportunity I got I would use some art I would do political cartoons and things mm -hmm. like that but but that was uh, not full-time. Mm -hmm. I was a beat reporter and eventually a city editor and things like that. But, and I went back to school and I intended to teach art but was talked out of it because like every year they were talking about doing away with the arts programs. But So I ended up teaching language arts mostly. Mm -hmm. But I worked art into it every chance I got. Okay. And, uh, yeah. and so when I retired from teaching I became full-time artist. Full-time artist. Yeah, I've been doing this pretty much full-time for nine years now. All right. So, thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you. You have beautiful art. That's gorgeous. Well, we are particularly proud, Paige, of the fact that we actually have a satellite office for Caldwell Arts Council. Uh, we are thrilled to have them in the southern end of the county, even if only for an occasional basis. One of the neatest parts about this is the town of Hudson Council decided to allow them the space for multiple reasons. We love the arts, but in particular, we were enthralled with the idea of hosting the Veterans in Arts program. So they will be offering classes here before long, we hope, for veterans related to either painting, writing, or music. Awesome. Now I'm with Carmela Tomlinson, who is director of the Small Business Center, which is located at Hub Station. Carmela, tell us about the Small Business Center. Okay, thank you, Paige. Um, the Small Business Center is affiliated, of course, with Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute. We are one of 58 small business centers in the state of North Carolina and our services are free. We provide one-on-one -on -one counseling to entrepreneurs, small businesses, or even existing businesses in the county, and we serve as Caldwell and Watauga counties. Um, we also provide webinars and seminars on a variety of topics, uh, from how to start a business, how to write a business plan, to uh, taxes, bookkeeping, all the things that you have to know as a small business owner. Why is it important to be at Hub Station? We love being here at the Hub Station because obviously in the business center, there's a lot of synergy, a lot of collaboration with entrepreneurs, with small businesses, um, with businesses that have been in the community for a while. So it's just a lot of energy in here. We can bounce ideas off each other. And as a small business center, it's good to be here, to be in the hub, to be providing all these services to the businesses in the building. While we're just standing here, tell me about EDGE. Okay, EDGE stands for 
entrepreneur development and group engagement. And we're so excited to have that here and available to our community. It's a shared space where we can have five entrepreneurs come into one space uh, for $125 a month. It, basically, you get everything you need to start a business. You, you, you walk in there, you've got your desk, uh, chair, Wi-Fi, um, and all you have to do is bring your laptop and your phone and you're ready to go. But the part of Edge, the, what's interesting about that is having all of those entrepreneurs coming together in one space, again, helping one another start their business and bouncing ideas off each other, just that creative environment that it brings. Anyone that's interested in starting a business and, and maybe having a business idea, Edge definitely is an opportunity that's a reasonable price, like I said, for $125 a month and you have such a great facility. You have shared space with workshop classrooms and conference rooms, all that's a part of it. And Wi-Fi, like I said, bring your laptop and your phone and you're good to go. How many entrepreneurs can be in Edge at a time? We've Right now we have Edge set up to have five entrepreneurs working together. Um, once we fill that space, you know, we'll, we'll have another office that office area that we can move into, but right now it's set up for five. And it allows for that synergy with each other, but also not too much, but there is a sh shared conference table in there for everyone. Talk to me a little bit about your partnership with the Town of Hudson and Hub Station. Okay, so at one point the Small Business Center was on campus at Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute. In 2018, we partnered with the town of Hudson and moving the small business center inside of the hub station. And so that partnership has been great working with them. We're able to collaborate on um, entrepreneur pro programs and projects at the college with the town here. So it's just great having these partnerships together. What build and what was this building? Originally, this building was uh, built as an addition to the K to the one through twelve classrooms that they had. Um, then it became the junior high building. When I was in school, it was the junior high building, and we th they then once the school expanded to the point that they moved the junior high to what is now the middle school. This just became part of the grades K through five and it operated like that for many many years and once they moved the school down to the new elementary school in 1999 this building became horizon school and it was uh, for um, alternative. alternative school for uh, grades one, one through six. six thank you kathy and it, and it operated that way until about i'm thinking it was the year 2018-19 that we took this building. We worked out an arrangement with the school system to uh, become owners of this building. And uh, we are now the proud owners of this, this building. And that's when the board decided that they would rebrand the entire campus and from the hub, the Hudson Uptown building, to the hub station. And what is in this building specifically? This building is a small business center and uh, it has businesses downstairs and upstairs and entrepreneurs. So it's an entrepreneurial center. And the uh, community college's small business center is located here. What is that relationship like and how long have they been here? They've been here from the beginning, once we took the building. They, they were part of the original vision that they would help us to launch the entrepreneurs and we needed them because we're a town we're not a small business center and we needed their expertise and so we worked out an arrangement with the community college from the very beginning of this building when we owned it to become a small business center why small business in the town of hudson and a business center period well it's not just for the town of hudson right. We are fortunate that we are located in the center of the county, but we hope to grow business out of this center for the entire county. And we really hope that the center, uh, the entire center, the hub station, will become regional. We need to uh, grow ourselves. 
we are very fortunate that we have so many companies and businesses in the community but there are individuals who have great ideas and they just need that support so my fellow commissioners and I realize that uh, of course we would like to grow the town of Hudson but we would like to see new businesses throughout the community the fact that the community college is here and they can get that support is tremendous um, and having been a banker for 43 years I talked to a lot of small businesses myself and I could see the need for them to have a place like this to be nurtured and to grow so that they can be more successful in the future. We're really proud of our role in this and what we've been able to do here. We hope they outgrow us. We, we, that's our, our hope is that they will become very, very successful and we won't have room for them. And they'll have to go out on their own into the community and s establish a business there which will promote our community. So that's, that's the concept. And as they move out, we hope we'll move more in. Exactly. Okay, we're in B building now upstairs and I just briefly wanted to talk about uh, the occupancy of the building and uh, how excited we are that it's full uh, or almost full. Um, we have memory lane photography that'll be in here March 1st. She'll be on the end. Across the hall, we have Deborah King. She's a family lawyer. She's also moving in on March 1st. Beside her, we have RT Marketing. And uh, below that is Annis Landscaping. Across the hall, we have Brad Ward, which is Armor of Truth Online Ministry. So by all of those different names, you can see, and I'll add in, of course, Paragon downstairs and then Smart Start downstairs. Between all of those businesses here in this building, it amazes me at the different things that are here. So it's very exciting that we have all the different types of businesses here. So we're almost full. If a business wants to rent space, how do they do that? Well, you know, first they need to call me, set up an appointment, let me show them the space. have very little space to show now. But what we do have, uh, now I do have a room on the main floor that is coming open March the 1st. I do not think that that will be open very long. It is a prime location. But they just call, make an appointment with me, let me show them the space, and then we go from there. Mm -hmm.